Have you ever baked a batch of cookies, taken that first warm bite, and thought, wow, this tastes amazing, only to realize you have no idea whether the vanilla you used was real or artificial? Vanilla is one of those flavors we almost take for granted. It's everywhere. Ice cream, cakes, coffee drinks, perfumes, even candles. But behind that familiar, comforting aroma is a surprisingly complicated story. And it raises a simple but fascinating question. Can you really tell the difference between real vanilla and artificial vanilla? Today we will answer that right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with real vanilla, because it's far more special than most people realize. Real vanilla comes from the vanilla orchid, a delicate plant that grows in tropical climates. The most famous type, vanilla planifolia, produces long green pods commonly called vanilla beans. But getting from flower to flavor isn't easy. Each vanilla flower blooms for just one day, and it must be pollinated during that short window. In many places, this pollination is done by hand, flower by flower. After that, the beans take months to grow and even longer to cure properly. That curing process is where the magic happens, slowly developing hundreds of aromatic compounds. This long, labor-intensive journey is exactly why real vanilla is so expensive. It's not just a flavoring. It's an agricultural product shaped by climate, time, and human effort. When you smell real vanilla extract, you're not smelling a single note. You're experiencing a layered aroma with hints of caramel, smoke, spice, and even floral tones. It's complex, warm, and slightly unpredictable, which is part of its charm. Artificial vanilla, on the other hand, takes a very different path. Instead of coming from an orchid, it's usually made from a compound called vanillin. Vanillin is the primary flavor molecule found in real vanilla, and scientists figured out how to create it in a lab over a century ago. Today, artificial vanillin is often made from materials like lignin, a byproduct of the paper industry, or from petrochemicals. The result is much cheaper, more consistent, and far easier to produce at scale. Here's where things get interesting. Chemically speaking, vanillin is vanillin, whether it comes from a bean or a lab. That means artificial vanilla can smell and taste remarkably similar to the real thing. In fact, many people grow up eating foods flavored with artificial vanilla so that flavor becomes their mental reference for what vanilla is supposed to taste like. When they finally try real vanilla, it can actually taste unfamiliar or even less vanilla because it's more subtle and complex. So could you actually tell the difference in a blind taste test? The honest answer is, it depends. In simple recipes like sugar cookies, pancakes, or plain ice cream, the difference can be noticeable, but not always obvious. Real vanilla tends to taste rounder and deeper, while artificial vanilla often comes across as sharper and more one-dimensional. But if sugar, butter, or chocolate are dominating the flavor, those nuances can easily get lost. In more delicate dishes, though, real vanilla has a chance to shine. Think custards, pastry creams, panna cotta, or lightly sweetened whipped cream. In these recipes, real vanilla adds a depth that artificial vanilla can't quite replicate. It lingers longer on the palate and feels more integrated rather than sitting on top of the flavor. Artificial vanilla still tastes good, but it can feel flatter by comparison. Smell plays a huge role here too. Our brains rely heavily on aroma when interpreting flavor. Real vanilla has dozens of aromatic compounds working together, while artificial vanilla usually relies on just one or a few. When you smell them side by side, the difference becomes clearer. Real vanilla smells warm and almost alive. 
while artificial vanilla smells familiar but simpler, like a single note played on a piano instead of a full chord. That said, artificial vanilla isn't the villain it's sometimes made out to be. It exists for good reasons. Real vanilla is expensive, and its price can fluctuate wildly due to weather, crop diseases, and political instability in growing regions. Artificial vanilla provides a stable, affordable alternative that allows vanilla-flavored products to be accessible to more people. Without it, many everyday treats would be far more expensive. There's also consistency to consider. Artificial vanilla tastes the same every single time. For large food manufacturers, that's a big deal. Consumers expect their favorite ice cream or snack to taste identical no matter where or when they buy it. Real vanilla, being a natural product, can vary from batch to batch. Some beans are smokier, some sweeter, some more floral. That variability is beautiful, but it's not always practical on an industrial scale. Another layer to this debate is how context shapes perception. If you're told you're tasting premium, real vanilla, you're more likely to notice complexity and richness. If you're told it's artificial, you may focus on what feels missing. Blind taste tests often reveal that people are less confident than they expect. Some can reliably tell the difference, especially trained tasters or bakers. Others guess wrong just as often as they guess right. This brings us to a bigger question. Does real vanilla always matter? For home baking, the answer depends on what you're making and how much vanilla is featured. If vanilla is the star of the show, real vanilla is worth it. If it's playing a supporting role, artificial vanilla can do the job just fine. Many experienced bakers even keep both in their kitchens choosing based on the recipe rather than a strict rule. At the end of the day, the question isn't really about which one is better in some absolute sense. It's about awareness. Knowing where your flavors come from changes how you experience them. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.